this 12th chapter, uh, spinning off of what we left from last week, Jesus is the way. I thought in verse 20, he says, there were certain of the Greeks among them that came to worship. Greeks were not Judeas. Judeas, they were not under Jewish art. They were not Semitic people. But Gentiles, they came to worship at this feast. The same came, therefore, to Philip, uh, which was a Basidia of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. And that's my little subject this morning. We would see Jesus. I want to see him high and lifted up, as Isaiah yeah. said, and his train filling the temple. I want to see Jesus. I apologize, and I want to uh, be the first to say that if we have shown you anything else but Jesus, then I apologize. We have presented to you a worship presentation, presentation of the word, announcements, information, a clean atmosphere that you can come in and feel comfortable in. We made sure things are in order and laid out in structure, because all things must be done in decency and in order. But what use of it to go through the whole service and you don't see Jesus? And you don't get a glimpse of the manifestation of him being in the building? It might have been better to go to the country club or just go golfing. But I don't think you came here I tuned in online to see people. I think you want to see Jesus and see him high and lift it up. These Greeks that were attending this feast, this particular feast was a time of celebration. And the Greeks had a place where they were in the outer court. Somebody said the outer court. And they could not come into the inner courts of the place of worship, but they came. Uh, it's strange how some people could come to church and stay on the out court. Even though you're in the building, but you're not going into the inner court and meeting him above the mercy seat. There's another level when you come into the house of the Lord. The Bible says we go from glory to glory to glory to glory, all that appear in Zion. Here these Greeks were, and they were feeling less because they were not true proselytes, converted Jews. But these non-Semitic people feel like they had a hookup with Philip and Andrew, because no doubt they grew up around them in the same hometown of Galilee. You know how we are. You grew up around friends that have made it in life and became successful. And you still go to the event like, oh, they know me. So I'm going to get in. I'm going to get back door pay, uh, passes. I'm going to make sure I get in and get a good seat. And they said, you, you send a message to them that, that I'm here. Clinton is here. It's, and the, the security says to the person that's famous, uh, Clinton is here. Said, Who is Clinton? They don't know him no more. Risen so high, they don't even recognize you no more. Same people that used to come over your house and eat your food and help sleep over overnight and hang out with you. And they had nothing even to have in life. But now God has raised them up and they've forgotten all about you and promised that when they became successful, they wouldn't forget about you. Yes, yes, yes. There are some friends like that because they understand that you're not on their level anymore, you know. So if you can pay for the ticket, you can get in. I'm going to talk over here, y'all wait. If you pay for the ticket, you can get in, you know. Now, no, I ain't comping you. You're not going with no comp. I'm tired of comping. Last year, I paid over $5,000 in comp tickets, so no more comp tickets. But can I see the person that's the star of this show, the main attraction, the main event? Is there any way that I can just get my name to him? Can you help me out and give me a hookup? Sirs, we would see Jesus. I didn't come for y'all. I didn't come for the feet. You keep the food. I didn't come for the feast. You keep the food. You keep the greens and hammocks and black. I'm sorry. You keep the food. I want to see Jesus. This longing desire that they had, I think, is the desire of the world today. They want to see Jesus. John helps us here in the 14th chapter in verse 6. He says, Jesus is the way. When you're looking for Jesus, you're looking for the truth. And you're also looking for the life. Outside of him, there is no other way. He said there are thieves and robbers, but he is the truth and he is the life. 1 Timothy 4 and 10, he says he is the living God. So if you're looking for Jesus, you're looking for the living God. 1 Timothy 4 and 10, not only the living God, but the Savior of all men especially those who believe in him. You will not find a savior outside of Jesus. 
not find a helper outside of Jesus. Go wherever you want to go, but he is the only savior for mankind. Galatians 1 and 4, he says, he gave himself for our sins that we might be delivered from this present evil, evil world. Because of his power of deliverance, I am delivered from this present evil world that we live in. I would, we would see Jesus. 2 Timothy 2, 11 and 12, if you be dead with him, Jesus, you shall also live with him. If you suffer with him, you shall also reign with him. Anybody been going through anything? Then get ready to reign with Jesus. It's a daily pursuit and a search for men and women everywhere. It's an enthusiasticness that they have, looking for the real Jesus. After money, power, fortune, fame, notoriety, followers on social media and TikTok and all that stuff, but you want to know, is Jesus on your TikTok? Is Jesus in your inner circle? You can have all these people and these thousands of followers, but can't none of them help you. Because whenever you look at your list of all the people that's in your following, can't none of them get you to Jesus but yourself, your prayer. Money can't do it, fame, fortune, and all the things. These images that are portrayed on these social media platforms are just, just it's a betrayal of the image that exists. It's a shame how young people get on social media, and I'm not throwing, uh, I guess I could say shade, shade. Is that old Kennedy shade is old? All right, anyway. Um, they get on these social media things and look at all these people that's, that's putting on this imagery like they have it going on. But when they get off of that social media, they're about to lose their lives. And you sitting in church and have an anchor for your mind and your soul, but you're looking at them like they're successful. You got the best thing they wish they had, which is Jesus. All these things that one would portray, would portray the thing is going to be deliverance, but cannot afford them deliverance. Cannot give them deliverance nor peace in their lives while they're pursuing everything yet having nothing. But you having nothing but having everything. I don't have what they have, but I got everything. Whatever you do, whatever you take, however you shoot me down, just leave me a little bit of Jesus and I'll come right back. Yes, the Bible says in Isaiah 9 and 6, 4, Jesus is the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Your toes should be moving in your shoes right about now. You mean to tell me you got the mighty God on your side, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. He's promoting his government here, and he says that he is the Prince of Peace, and the government will be upon his shoulder. 2 Corinthians 14 and 33, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. We would see Jesus. He's not the author. Arthur is the beginner or the writer of confusion, but he will use confusion. God will confuse your enemy, but he's not the author of confusion. Jesus will mess up people when they see you, but they'll see you and think, you still here? I'm still here. You thought what you did was trying to take me out, but aren't you looking sideways like, I thought you, I wasn't over yet. I was just going through. God will use confusion to confuse your enemy. Watch this. Clap your hands three times. Some of you are too slow, but you confuse your enemy when you begin to praise God. No matter what you're dealing with right now, when you break out in a praise unprompted, just because you know God's been that kind to you, it, the devil's saying, why are you clapping your hands? Why are you so excited? Why are you happy? Because I got joy unspeakable and full of glory. These Greeks were designed to see Jesus. No doubt they were living in that same place again where Philip and Andrew were. They were, they were outsiders trying to look on the inside. They wanted a brighter understanding about who Jesus was. I wanted to use that thought again that they lived in the same city. No doubt your neighbor next door for you was wondering who you serve. People that you work with on the job and they know that things are kind of challenging right now for the company, but you just come into work skipping, walking in, smiling, not walking in frustrated and upset because you know the job is not your provision. God's your provision. He's the one that's looking out for you. You don't go in there like your last breath and hope is on this job. The only reason the company is still open because you're there, because God makes you the salt and light of the world. We would see Jesus. We would see Jesus.
Jesus possessed, with Jesus I possess nothing, but I have everything. Philip and Andrew did not have the answer for their friends, so they went in verse 23 and 24 of this gospel of John. They said, Jesus, they want to see you. Jesus becomes excited now because he's been preaching and walking the earth for some three, uh, three plus years. He said, now the hour has come. Oh God, I feel like running right there because every one of you will come into a moment of time that everything around you and all the people that you've been hiding from will see the manifestation of your life. The hour will come to a Kairos moment, a God moment, where they're going to see Jesus in your life. That nothing else will display this but what you're about to go through. Jesus said, now the Son of Man will be glorified. He says, except the grain of wheat falls into the ground and die. He moves the narrative to a story like Jesus often do and goes into a practical application. Some of you never know what a corn, a grain of corn looked like except for popcorn. Come on, keep up, keep, keep, keep up. But still you understand what a grain looks like. It's just a small piece of something that's dead and dried up. Jesus said, like it is, Paul says, with money or that that you sow, as long as you keep it in your pocket, that's all you got. But if you take it out and let it fall into the ground, look at somebody soft and say, it's time for you to fall, time for you to fall. Don't worry about the fall because you're coming back up better than you've ever been before. A fall doesn't mean a, a setback. A fall prepares you for your comeback. But as you fall into the ground and let it fall, it abides alone. But it's not just falling into the ground of John's gospel. He said, it must die. And here's what I'm lose a lot of your head, but don't worry about it. I got some of you going with me. Not only does it fall, it must die. We would see Jesus, then you must fall. You must go like a grain of corn into the ground and die. And therefore, if you die, you're producing, bring forth much fruit. Don't look at a person life and hate because what they got. Ask them, how many deaths did you die to get that? How low did you have to go to come up that high? How is it that God kept you alive and all you've been through? And now I can see what you possess, but I know you have to go through something to get it. Because the devil was not sitting by idly watching you be blessed. You have to go through some burdens to get to the blessing, except it died hour, the hour, the real hour of time to show the purpose of the Son of Man that must be glorified for God therein to get glory. Psalm 62 and two, 66 and 2 says, I am created to make his praise glorious. Psalm 62, 66 and 2 says that to me, I have been created to make his praise glorious. Oh, God, except it die, except he makes it glorious. Uh, Lloyd, is Lloyd still there? Oh, Terry, pick up the bass. Show me the bass. Show me the bass. Show me the bass. Pick it up and show it to me. Except is it, it, it has someone to move it. It has no sound. Just show it to me. Oh, yes, just show it. Show it to the congregation. Did y'all hear it? Do you hear it? No? Oh, it's hit one string. Is it turned on? Is it, it's hit one string. Oh, do you hear it now? Okay, cut it off, Terry. Uh, now show it to him again. Say, look at this wonderful bass. The bass represents your life. It represents my life. But every now and then, God picks you up. And he shows you that something's about to come out of your life. And if I hit you real hard, you're going to make a sound that nobody else can make. Your sound is not my sound, and my sound is not your sound. But there is a sound in you that will give God glory. Only God will get the glory. Say, I am created to make his praise glorious, glory. Therefore, it must die. If it doesn't die, it won't bring forth fruit. It won't produce anything. Not only will it fall, but it must fall and it must die. Once it dies, it continues to bring forth fruit. Jesus was appealing here to the presence of the cross, of course. Speaking about him going to Golgotha and dying. Speaking of his death being that of a grain of corn falling into the ground and bringing forth much fruit. Paul lets us see the parallel in 2 Corinthians 4 and 11. He says, for we were also alive, or always, we, we that are always, we that are, all, that are alive, are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, 2 Corinthians 4 and 11, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested or revealed in our mortal bodies. We are alive, but we're giving over to our own personal dying, dying to self, that the life of Christ may be manifested in our mortal bodies. I 
would see Jesus. So therefore, I must decrease that he might increase. Every time you see me, then you don't see Jesus. The less you see of me, the more you see of Jesus. And the more you see of Jesus, the better it becomes. But the more I'm in the way, the more dying I got to go through. Paul encourages us here to understand in 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 8. He said, we have a treasure in earth and vessels. If the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. It's not about you. It's about what's in you. The devil is mostly after. And for us to see Jesus, there got to be a test that can bring Jesus to the forefront of your life. I don't know how much Jesus you got about what you make it out of and what you go through. He says we are pressed in 1st, 2nd Corinthians 2 and 4. We are pressed on every side. Yeah, yet we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. In the midst of all of these perils and ups and downs of life, we still keep bouncing back. It confuses the enemy to understand how in the world do you keep coming back when I hit you with my best shot? Because Jesus is on the inside and greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. It is in my weakness that I become strong. Fully God, but fully man. Fully human, but yet fully little God. The depths of self, the death of self, and the struggle of self brings about a resurrection power that Jesus is manifested in our lives. John 11 and 4 says it like this. This sickness is not unto death. This is not going to take you out. But this is for the glory of God. I got to finish my little sermonette. What you have been dealing with is not to take you out. But this is to elevate and escalate your praise to give God the glory. If you ain't hollering yet, he'll turn up the fire till you get a praise out your quiet Methodist mouth. But there is something you will go through that God will bring you out with your shy conservative self and you are hot to God gets the glory out of your life. I want to see Jesus. Life is coming out of this. The grain is falling to the ground. John 12, 24. But life is coming out of this. The old things are being shedded and the new things are coming in. Fruitfulness is coming back into the life because the old is passing away and the new is coming on. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, then who can be against us? He's more than the world that stands against you. God's got your interest enemy tricked out. They can't understand what to hit you with. The more they curse you, the more God bless you. The more they talk about you, the more God elevates you. I don't understand your process. The more you die, the more we see Jesus. I didn't come for you to see me. I want you to see what made me who I am and what I am. It's by the grace of God that I am what? I am. So flesh and the natural man cannot glorify God. It is the spiritual man that God gets the glory. In the same book of John 12 and verse 36, the Bible says Jesus hid himself. For a moment, I want to talk to the hidden treasures. You've been coming to mountaintop for a while, sitting back there ducking under them blue chairs, and you have the audacity to go home saying, he looking at me. I'm just looking over there. But Jesus is looking for you. I'm looking over there, but Jesus is looking for you. Help me preach in this section say you can't hide much longer because Jesus is going to show himself in your life. You can come on the line and sit there quietly in your living room, but Jesus is coming to your life. He wants to manifest himself in your life. And believe me, sister, believe me, brother, you're going to holler to the downstairs neighbors here. Jesus lives in this house. Ah, glory. I would, I would. I want to see Jesus. Thank God for the blessed sacrifice. Thank God for the honor that he gives. If you die to yourself, I will honor you to my father. You get yourself out of the way, I will bless you more than you can bless yourself. You just decrease and let me increase. Don't worry about what's going to how it's going to turn out. It's already working for your good. Anything you're dealing with right now, God 
said is working for your good. I'm turning it out for your good. Everything is working for your good. The Greeks didn't understand it. They thought that their wisdom would understand who Jesus is. He says, no, it's not by your wisdom. This knowledge of God is by the Spirit. So to the Greeks, it was foolishness. To the Jews, it was nonsense or scandalous. But to we that believe, it was Christ, the very power of God. For us to see Jesus, we want to see the very power of God and the manifestation of him in our lives. We are grateful to know that whatever you go through and whatever you're dealing with, that there's greater glory coming out of it. That your story will be his story. Yeah, God will write himself into what you're going through and let you know, oh, this ain't about you. I got the pen now. I scripted everything about your life. So in the end, I am the author and the finisher of your faith. And joy will be set before you. Now the next time you face a trial or some tribulation, face it with saying, God's about to get some glory. He's about to manifest himself once again. Though he slay. Yet will I trust him. And all the days of my appointed time, I wait till my change come. I'm not in it to stay there, but change is coming out of it, and I want to see Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, give the Lord a good praise in the house. We would see Jesus, not men. Not relics, but I want to see Jesus. Hold your hands up. This is a story, then I'll pray. Famous, put your hands down for a moment. I'll give my story, then we'll pray. A famous artist years ago that many of us know very well and wrote many songs, Billie Jean is. Yes. <laughs> One bad apple. And on and on and on. Grew up in his music. And he passed. And they said he was in Vegas. His show. So went to the show, had good seats. Holograph flew in. I said, he's here, he's here, he's here. And it was so real. But people were people running through the holograph. I said, wow, that, that's, that's Michael Jackson. And that's no Clinton, it's a, it's a holograph. It's, it's an image. And I promise you, saints, I'm so glad Michael Jackson didn't show up. <laughs> I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to get out the building fast enough. Or even Tupac. However, my story leads you to this. People paid money, big tickets, to get down front. And they were in it like, that's Michael, that's, I said, no, it ain't. No, yes, it is. No, it ain't. Because they wanted to see. And he wasn't there. I submit to you, the Jesus that I present is not a holograph. He's not a relic, he's real. If you know he's real, put your hand on your heart, say, he lives within my heart. So the world is searching, trying to find happiness. And many go through a plethora of substance and things and men and women and people and money and searching relationship after relationship after relationship, searching, trying to find that one person that can give you real joy. That's the world we live in now. They want to know, is Jesus still in the church? Yes, he is. Is Jesus still alive? Yes, he is. Does Jesus still work miracles? Yes, he does. Hold your hands up. Father, I bless you this morning. Thank you for opening the hearts I want to see you high and lifted up. 
shining in the light of your glory, pouring out your love and your power. I cry holy, holy, holy. Jesus, my life is torn into shreds. I feel like Job of old. I'm feeling for you everywhere. And I can't touch. And I can't feel spiritually. But yet I know my Redeemer lives. You are alive. You are present because you're the same today, yesterday and forever. So Lord Jesus, meet me at my point of reach and transform my life to show your glory. Satan, oh say it with some authority when you talk to him, say Satan, Satan. you have no weapons here. Your assignment is over. I believe Jesus is the way and he will be seen in my life. Give God praise. Oh